So I haven't uploaded an Overwatch video in months. If you're a returning subscriber, you know that I I stopped playing. I made a video saying I stopped playing. Um, and I regret the way that I voiced my concern in that video. I wasn't very constructive. I basically just whined and said that the community was toxic and that I was tired of it. <clears throat> I regret the way that I spoke in that video, to be honest. But nothing I can do to change the past, right? We're we're here we're here today, so I want I want to talk about some issues on console. I was inspired by Siegel's video. If you haven't seen it, I suggest you go watch it. The link is in the description. It is a really good listen. I admire the way that he spoke about the issues and how professional he was. And there was something that he said at the end of the video. I'm gonna play it right now that inspired me. I love this game, and. I feel like I had to talk about this, these sort of issues, because the Overwatch community is pretty small, guys. There's seriously like less than 10 or 15 YouTubers, Twitch streamers that do this full time with big audiences. And a lot of people, YouTubers and streamers have just quit the game to move on to greener pastures. And I think it's important to talk about these issues because I love games. I I got into this because I, I loved Overwatch. I love competing. I love learning about the games. I love talking about them. And I want to see true change for Overwatch. I don't want just another hero release or two or three hero releases per year with a couple maps and we call it good with some recycled holiday events. I want to see true change. I want to see Overwatch be better than it ever has been. And I don't think I'm alone in feeling this way about Overwatch being frustrating or tilting to play way too often. So listening to Siegel's video really inspired me to make this one. Um, he had some incredible points, really good points, and very well spoken. If you haven't seen the video, I highly recommend it. The link is in the description. Please go listen to Siegel's perspective. It is a good listen. Uh, a lot of the problems he spoke about correlate both ways to both the console and the PC scene. Uh, but the, the console scene has its own problems. And the console scene has been neglected right from the beginning. I mean, everybody knows that this is a, a primarily, this is a PC game, right? Blizzard wants to focus on the Overwatch League and the pro scene, and I completely get it. But the console scene is massive, or at least it was. It was giant, and it, it's been neglected. It really has been. There have been problems in the game ever since the beginning, and they've just never been addressed. Uh, people talk about it all the time on Reddit and whatnot, but I want to touch on them here. So first and foremost, I want to talk about the aiming system. The aiming system has been flawed ever since the beginning. If you're a casual player and you go to your sensitivity settings and you want to change and alternate some stuff, this is what you see. You have a million different settings. You have no information as to what any of this does. So if you want to figure it out and you want to change your sensitivity and find what's best for you, you got to either look online to learn about what all this stuff does or B, just guess. And that's just ridiculous. There should be some in-game information that tells you specifically what all of this stuff does. It To me, it should be as simple as every other first-person shooter. You have 1 through 14, or whatever it is, and you pick your sensitivity settings. But it's just not the case. There is so many different settings to go through, and people don't know what any of this stuff is. On top of that, the aim system is super flawed. If you're a hitscan player, you, you've experienced this before, where your crosshairs will pull in directions that it really shouldn't. I feel like the hitboxes on some of the characters pull your aim way harder than others, or it's hard to explain exactly what it is, but if you've experienced it, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. There is definitely a problem with the aim system, and it needs to be addressed, uh, as well as in-game information as to what all of these settings are. Because like I said, a casual player is gonna get turned off by this. They're not gonna know what to do, and chances are they're probably just gonna stay on the default settings because they don't know what the hell is going on. One of the next bigger issues that I've found browsing Reddit and forums and you know just looking at the general consensus is Smurfs. Smurfs are a big problem on console. And to some of you, if you're in the higher rank, you, you, you may disagree, but you gotta open your eyes to the, you know, the majority of the player base, the casual player base, they are, you know, lower tier, middle tier ranks, and Smurfs are a problem. When you're playing on console, you can have unlimited accounts. It's not like PC where you have to buy a new game every time you want a new account. On console, all you do is make a new PSN. Done. You can have unlimited accounts. And 
the report system is flawed too. That, that, that's the next topic I'm going to talk about, but you can't just simply report somebody for throwing and expect something to be done because that's just not the case. Um, so as far as Smurfs, I don't know what kind of solution can be done. To me, it, it sounds like a Sony PlayStation problem. I don't think Blizzard can really do anything on their end except for maybe raising the level limit for competitive. Uh, you know, if it was level 50, the people aren't going to want to create new accounts every single time, right? They're not going to want to grind a level 50. It's hard enough to grind a level 25. But it kind of works both ways where it's kind of like the casual player wants to play competitive but doesn't want to get to level 50. But it's also kind of good because by the time you're level 50, you're going to have a better understanding of the game and the mechanics. So a solution to that may be to raise the level limit. But, like I said, it kind of contradicts itself, because maybe some casual players don't want to grind to level 50. It's, that's a tough one. But Smurfs are definitely an issue, and they need to be addressed. So, to kind of backtrack a little bit, too, I wanted to talk about the reporting system as well. Uh, for me, personally, the reporting system hasn't done anything for me. When I was playing before, I would continually report people, and I have never once received a confirmation message saying, Hey, we received your report, action has been taken. Never. And I've had these same people in my games consistently, over and over, and I've never had anything done about it. So that's demotivating for me because it's like you have these one percenters, like we're talking small portion of the game that are genuine trolls that are people that are out there to ruin the game for others. It's a small percentage. But you have these people out there that are continually getting away with it, getting away with it, and then continuing. And then I don't get a confirmation message saying that, hey, we received your report and action has been taken. That's a kick in the nuts, man. That's annoying. That is so frustrating to have happen. But then on top of that, if you do receive a confirmation message, chances are that this player is probably just going to go on another account and do the exact same thing over and over again. So there needs to be a better system in place where Blizzard can detect whether it's the same person on, you know, different accounts. I don't know if there's something that can be done there, but I feel like that needs to be talked about and addressed. Uh, on top of that, again, the avoid system. So I, I have avoided people. I think you all have. And I can't be the only one that has had this happen, but I've avoided people and then played another game and that exact person that I just put on the avoid list is on my team a second time, maybe even a third time. That should never happen. If you purposely got rid of the prefer player for the avoid player, the avoid player has to work, man. Like you can't, you can't avoid somebody and then just boom, you have them on your team again. No, absolutely unacceptable. That can't happen. Now, because the console scene has slowly diminished, like, right now, it's it's at the lowest it's ever been. I mean, Top 500 right now is at, like, 3,900 on PS4 and A, which is insane. That's so low. Uh, I think that Blizzard needs to introduce something to revitalize the console scene because it, it was massive. I mean, there's no, there's no denying how big the console scene was. It genuinely was big. I think one of the things that they can do that would greatly and i'm talking greatly revitalize the console scene is cross-platform between xbox and playstation i think it needs to happen and i think if it does happen it's gonna bring back a lot of players that stop playing because they really had nothing to grind for but now if they if they introduce that you kind of have this feeling of wanting to assert dominance on the other console you know as corny as that might sound to some people, I think that that would bring back a lot of the incredibly talented players on both platforms. They, if you look through the top 500 list, a lot of the players, like the OGs that were, you know, running running the top 500 back in the day, like, they, they're done. They don't play no more. But if you introduce top 500 and you combine the two, you have PlayStation and Xbox together, now it's like, there's something to, to fight for. It's like, you wanna you wanna be that guy right it kind of you just get that feeling of wanting to be better than the other player on the other platform i i think it needs to happen i think it'll bring back a lot of fire in in, in a lot of these og players that used to play competitively i think it needs to happen now that also brings me on to my next point to me if you want to revitalize console overwatch 
You need to implement social features that encourage people to play together. You need to encourage team play, and you need to encourage people to want to stack. Back in the day, you could stack all day long, and it, it was never frowned upon. It was fun. It was better that way. It was team versus team. Nowadays, if you stack, you're looked down on. You're it's you didn't deserve your rank. You were boosted. That's not the mentality to have. The game is meant to be played with friends, and it's meant to be played as a team. So, to me, I think they need to implement an in-game system of some sort where it's 6v6, team versus team, and it's competitive, okay? Now, I know that competitive scene on console, lol, uh, I get it, PC players, are, they're gonna say that about every single game, but there are some incredibly talented people on console, there, there is. And it, it, competitiveness always started on console. I mean, look at Call of Duty, look at Halo, Gears of War. There's a scene for it. There's always been a scene for it. Now, even if Blizzard didn't do LAN events with console, whatever, they don't have to put a ton of money into it. But if it was an online system, all in game, uh, and you could have built in tournaments, and you know, you have qualifiers to bring your team to finals or whatever and you you could win something as simple as loot boxes or in-game currency to buy loot boxes or golden gun points or even if they implemented a new system where you could buy you could you could get special skins or something to me they need to bring back the social aspect of the game and the best way to do that is to do what the game's all about it's, it's about six stacking it's about team coordination it's about you know playing together and i think the best way to do that is to implement an in-game system where team versus team you just go off with each other that's the best way to do it now that system would mean that you're playing with five other people that you're familiar with or maybe you just randomly got together with maybe like through the lg system or whatever whatever the case may be but i also think that if you are solo queuing now this is specifically on console I feel like you should be forced into team chat. You should not be able to leave team chat. You should always be able to mute people. If you don't want to speak, that's fine. If you, but I feel like you you should be forced into team chat. Console is different from PC. On PC, if you leave team chat, you can still see the text. You can still coordinate with your team through the text messaging system. On console, we don't have that. We have an in-game wheel that says understood, thanks, and group up. That's all you have. So if somebody joins a game and leaves team chat instantly, you're already at a disadvantage. I get it. Some people don't want to socialize with others. I completely understand. Uh, but I feel like in a game like Overwatch, especially on console, where the only way that you can communicate with your team is through the mic system, you should be forced into team chat. And if you don't want to listen to somebody or somebody's being rude to you or whatever the case is, then you, you go and mute that person. I, I, other than that, I think you should have to be in team chat. And I think a lot of people would agree with that. It, 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 there's nothing more frustrating than having somebody leave team chat instantly and simply spamming thanks or understood with, with the interaction wheel or whatever you want to call it. That is frustrating and that rubs off on your other teammates and now your teammates are tilted and it just it's just a vicious cycle that's how overwatch works one person gets tilted and it just it affects others and then those people affect others and it's just it's just a vicious cycle that continues and continues so i think forcing people into a team chat like i said if you want to manually mute somebody completely understand if you want to mute yourself completely understand but you should have to listen if, if there's people that are giving you know actual call outs you should be there to listen to it. Uh, so now for the rest of the video, um, I want to play out some clips. I was playing with a few other friends. Some of them you may know of, Digital Next as an example. Uh, very, very well known Pharah player on the console scene. Um, my friend Chicken Nine Man, uh, PC Swig, who still plays Overwatch. He's one of my only friends that still plays. A consistent top 500 player. So he's very well knowledge in the game. Uh, he understands what would make it better. Um, so I'm going to play out some of the clips that they said because it's really interesting to hear what other people feel as well. Um, I think it's important to hear. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. 
and that will be the rest of the video i want to take the second to say thank you guys for watching and listening i hope that this actually gets seen by by blizzard because the console scene it feels bad man like we definitely have been neglected we have been neglected we've been in the dark uh, aside from a few changes to like symmetrous turrets torps turret back before he he got altered uh the on aim assist for friendlies like there were little changes like that that made the console experience better but i feel like there's way more way more problems that need to be addressed and the for me most of them are social problems that would change the way pe players feel about each other and the toxicity towards each other that's just gonna bring the player base back if we see those changes so anyways like i said thank you guys again i'm gonna play out the rest of uh, rest of these clips I hope you guys understand. If you disagree or you have other opinions, let me know. Comment down below. This is this is the place to do it. If you've got something else that you want to add or say about it, I'd love to hear it. I'll be I'll be going through the comments and reading what you guys have to say as well. So I'm done rambling. Thank you guys for watching. Yeah, and I think my biggest thing why I stopped Overwatch or stopped playing Overwatch altogether was because there was no incentive in ranked for me to keep My going right it's like once you once you hit top 500 it's like what else is there what else is there for me to get it's like i keep getting competitive points but all i get is gold guns it, That's it's, true. i i need something else to to keep me motivated in the game and like yeah it sucks when a game kind of forces you to like the meta forces you to play certain heroes that you're not used to. Yeah. Or that you have to rely on people not to be toxic to, to win a game. And I think that's what Overwatch's biggest downfall is, is that they... You have to rely on teammates. Like, your team... Like, you have to rely on these people in order to win a game. And if not, you're just... You're screwed. It's like all your hard work just goes to waste. Right. And I think what also hurt console Overwatch is that Blizzard paid so much attention to PC Overwatch. Right. Like, PC Overwatch was their main priority. And they did everything for PC Overwatch. Like, how cool would it have been to have our own, like, console leagues and stuff? And I get third parties do it and stuff it's like that. It's not the same, though. Yeah, I want something official, like... How cool would it have been, like, when I went to BlizzCon, like, we had the media badges, and I got to go to the stage and, like, watch the... them actually play. Like, that was such a cool feeling. Like, I can only yeah. imagine console players getting something like that. I have it, I have it painted on my wall. I bought, like, the Collector's Edition. I bought the Diva statue. Like, I was legit gonna get a Farrah tattoo. Like, exactly. Because you I love, love Overwatch. I love Overwatch so much. But, like I said, the competitive thing, and I think what ruined it for me is that you have to rely on people so much. And I think that's what will do it for me, is, like, bringing back no different competitive that. modes is, is like, really, like, key to me. Because I want to... I, I hella want to play, like, a free-for-all competitive mode and try to go for top 500 in there. Right. Because if that was the case, like, that's all me. It doesn't matter what hero I pick, that's like, that's me doing the work in order to get top 500 in that. Or if it's I like agree. a 3v3, it's like me and two other friends, of course you would do it with two other friends. I mean, you can do it with two other randoms, but like, of course you have two other friends that play this game. Wait, did you ever Crazy. take down your painting or what? <laughs> no, I still have, like, my Overwatch painting logo is like right in front of me, like right behind my monitor, so I see it. And like, since I bought the Collector's Edition, it came with all the postcards of all the maps, and they're all individually framed. Yeah, yeah. That was, like, cool. And, like, it looks nice, and, like, I... I, I love Overwatch so much. But it's, like, they just didn't take care of the console scene. At all. And it's, I, like, over console Overwatch was a neglected stepchild. I think between fixing the aim settings, letting us choose what maps we wanted to play... Or even even a veto system. Why not have a voting system? Like yeah. if you're if if you get queued into a game, right? So right before the game loads, it's like, okay, you, these twelve players are gonna play in a match together. It puts you in a screen where you can choose, you can vote on three maps, right? You yeah. maybe one King of the Hill, one two CP, an assault payload map, whatever. 
And the 12 players can now vote on what they want to play. Why not do that? I just hear like this little descent in the back cool. of my head, just that, just me thinking that, oh hey, the people are only going to farm that one particular game type, and they're going to yeah, use that yeah. to like win. They, I'm just thinking of ways to exploit that. it, yeah, I'll just right, play, right off the bat. Then, but I that's think okay though. Would just, they won't why, play like all the heroes. But stuff, why is that, that? That's not a bad thing though, because who cares? At this point, it's like nobody really cares about rank. The number, yeah. nobody mm -hmm. actually cares. At this point, to me, it's about having fun. That's why I stopped playing Overwatch. I didn't stop playing Overwatch because I couldn't climb rank. I didn't give a fuck about my SR. My biggest thing was I stopped having fun. I was getting angry, and it wasn't fun. Would I, would I have had more fun if I could have picked and choose what maps I played? Maybe. If I could have chose my teammates or, you know, had a better, oh, better no, queue system, <laughs> maybe I would have had more fun. One thing I think this game actually lacks, and this is, like, completely away from the competitive scene, but I just I think this game uh, doesn't really have enough shenanigans in it. Like, even with the casual mode, it's still, like, sixes, and you're run gonna be running sixes. There's not really enough space for you to just kind of, like, screw around and just random stuff happen, you know? Now, I know I'm kind of comparing it to TF2 at this point, but, like, even though that game's kind of been dying, it still has a pretty strong community, and yeah. the games that you play in there, they never really feel the same. Like, you're always gonna be playing against different people that have different, different skill sets. So, I don't know, some, some factor of RNG mixed into there would probably help just just a little bit make things a little fresh and, you know, maybe get some silly situations. Very I think we made it interesting because it's like something we all really like care about and like want yeah. to see get better again. And it's like, yeah, I like, especially me, I should talk the game, but it's because I care about it so much that I hate that it just kind of like not disappeared entirely, mm -hmm. but... I don't know. This I, I I feel like if they do the right things, the game could make a comeback and like get a lot of people interested again. Right. I think people are. I think all the people that want to come back, they're waiting to come back. Like they're waiting for Blizzard to be like, hey, do something so I could come back. Like I have a reason to come back. Like, there's no. There's a lot of people that want to come back. Bro, there's no other there's game PC like this. players that want to come back. No, this yeah, is the only PC kind of game that want to come back. Yeah. Because a lot. I know. Uh, there's a lot of like people like uh like. Uh, players I know that are like pretty good at the game and they move to PC and they have to play they play tank because they have like They have the game sense and stuff, but they're not on the mechanical yet But they want to come back because they're like they don't like being a tank player on PC They're like you just yep. do something like overall to make like make console better and so I could come back like already. Yeah, absolutely. I Agree because there's no other game like this like if you're if you're a huge fan of overwatch There's nothing else you can go to if you're tired of overwatch mm -hmm. and you want to play something similar what do you like? There, there's nothing. There's nothing like, yeah. similar to playing Overwatch. So, if they if they improve the the complaints of the community and they make some changes, even if it's a big overhaul, man, if it completely changes the game, it is what it is. It'll bring people back. And if it's a good thing, it'll be a good thing. Yeah, poor yeah. Overwatch. It was like Blizzard. I don't feel so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh shit.